We're going to be continuing from the 18th book of Israel. Okay? Tested and proven. Tested and proven. We're going to be on picking up from page 254, which is chapter 24. And the title is Damascus of this of the sermon. Damascus, the prophecies rest on the prophecy of Damascus. And <clears throat> the, uh, the date was Abraham 29, and the worldly date was 8, 11, 18. So we're going to go right into verse 2. Let's see, Pastor says, I was trying to gather up all the information that I could on this news. And I hope you absorbed all of what was brought out from the three great Gahans, which were, came out earlier. Verse 3, Pastor says, the thing about Damascus, if you can get, if I can get you to see this. He said, it's not easy. And there's many things, many teachings that are not easy without the teacher. He says, there's no way we can understand it on our own. He says, I know this. All of these prophecies from the beginning, what was brought out by all the Kohans on the news and all these prophecies rest on Damascus. He also mentions how he's going to get into the history. And he says, there's a lot of history that you've got to understand and the scriptures. He mentions something here. He speaks of the Yamatria. He says, the Yamatria is helping, but the prophecies are, are what lay it out for us. And I want us to keep it in our minds. Okay, there should be no murmuring about the Yamatria. Now, our foundation is what, man? What is the foundation of the house of Yahweh? The law and the prophets. Okay? Now, this Yamatria, Pastor says, is helping. It's a tool. It's a, a, a great blessing that Yahweh has given us to show us further detail. Possibly things we didn't pick up just from the law of the prophecy. But we have to allow Israel Hawkins now to lead and guide us through the Yematria, or else we'll make humongous mistakes. <clears throat> I'm quite sure any artist can understand the, uh, 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 looking in detail. If you look at a, a painting and if you ever spoke to a, the person that, that created the painting, I know I spoke to, to one here who did a painting. I don't see him in the room. Uh, but he's wanting to see if you can see the detail in it, not just the obvious. And Yahweh is using this beautiful tool to help, again, just support what the prophecies have laid out for us. So don't murmur about it at all. If it comes up in your mind, kick it to the side. Yahweh is in full control. He knows what he's doing. It's really uplifting to you when you see Yahweh bringing this information out to his house in this time period. Look how humble pastor is right there. He's not even saying, I'm bringing this out to you. He's speaking when it's really uplifting to see when you see Yahweh bringing this information out to his house in this time period, showing that he wants you. He wants you in his house. And he's training your mind, trying to get you to see the great complexity of his mind that he's offering to give to you. Complexity, great complexity of his mind. I couldn't, I don't think I would be successful at writing a regular dictionary or even inspiring someone else to write a regular dictionary, let alone create something and inspire something like 
what James Strong has done, or even inspire the Yermatria. I can't, I can't keep up with the numbers in a sermon when I, when I hear the beautiful teachers of Yahweh speak. I can't imagine the mind, the complexity of Yahweh's mind that he's got details all in it. Everything is in order. Nothing out of place, even down to a license plate tag. Getting us to absorb the complexity of Yahweh's mind, wow, it's very humbling. It's very humbling when you just look at a creature Yahweh's created and you look at the detail in it. The more you zoom in, the more you see. Wow. I mean, I've seen a cricket before, but the closer I get, the more things I discover. And that's what Pastor is doing with us. You know, he's, he's bringing us to be more and more. He's feeding us more and more, teaching us, leading us, guiding us, pleading with us more and more to get us to become like Yahweh. In verse 4, to at least have an, 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 an idea of how to think like Yahweh, to observe how he thinks. The news outlets of the world, here's a small inkling coming up. We're reaching them with this broadcast. Any of you have a broadcast that you're reaching the whole world with? <laughs> Just think of that. Surely Yahweh is a news place. We're reaching them with this broadcast. We're reaching them with all the different ways, even with Twitter, he says. We're going straight into the offices of Trump and everyone else on Twitter. We also heard from Saudi Arabia. Any of you ever, I mean, mailed a brochure or anything to Saudi Arabia and got a response? And, and Yemen. Yemen? As horrible as what has been taking place in Yemen now for years? The work of Yahweh is there. I'm sometimes blessed to be able to answer a prayer from a man from a foreign nation. So I get to see it sometimes. It doesn't matter what I see. Pastor vouches for it. I'm in full unity with Israel Hawkins. Let me see what Pastor says here. He says, I don't know if you can see this really faint name here. And this is a, a man who who signed something, and he put it up on the monitor. He says, but I'm putting my finger on it, if you can understand the uh, Arabic. So here is a response from a man from an Arab nation. You see what he's, he's, he's just showing us these different nations that Yahweh is touching and reaching with his work. He said he signed it in his native language. He says in verse 6, we also had someone from Iran contact us this week. I ask you again, can, can you contact anyone from just any one of these nations and get a response? In particular, with promoting the beautiful work of Yahweh, the laws and the prophecies of Yahweh? It's hard to do that <laughs> out here on the street in Abilene and get a positive response back. So surely this is Yahweh's hand here. So we had someone from Iran co contact us this week, and we have people wanting to come to the feast, and they're wanting prayer. Now, this example I have been a part of before. They're wanting prayer because the wars are trying to close the gates on them, and that's what these wars are for, is to try to keep the message of Yahweh from going out. And they're not keeping it from going out. And I've been blessed to speak with men that are just trying to figure out ways to get a book of Yahweh. And you've heard pastors say that but before. He's talked about it. You know, and they're getting a book of Yahweh shipped to an adjacent country, you know, a country right beside them. And then they drive or have a relative drive miles and miles and miles to another country just to pick up their material from the house of Yahweh. 
That's what they do to get the literature that we can walk right over and pick up on the, off the stamp. It's amazing to see the efforts. <clears throat> Verse 7. If we see sin in ourselves, repent of sin. Pastor says that's the main thing. I want to read that again. If we see sin in ourselves, repent of sin. Notice, he didn't say if we see sin in ourselves, to hold our heads down. If we see sin in ourselves, to give up. If we see sin in ourselves, to feel worthless. That's not at all what Yahweh is encouraging us to do. He says, repent of sin and then start practicing as best you can on your own from what you know. No, from the teachings from the house of Yahweh. Listen, this is the pattern, man, that, that keep us from getting so beat down. Whenever we, rec- whenever we look into that beautiful, perfect mirror, that law of Yahweh, we should find flaws. I'm not celebrating that. But we're talking about perfection we're comparing ourselves to. So when we come to confession, we should have things on our confession list. It doesn't need to be just an effortless uh, contact to the unclean and um, that's all. And great priest, would you please forgive me? You know, it's, it's... When you see sin, repent of it. Turn from it, okay? Acknowledge it. That's what confession is for. Now you have a work list. If you're any... If you're anywhere near as lame as I am, you keep a list of it. I have it in my bag over here. So when it's time to confess, I can look down my list. But it also shows me where I've grown and also see where I don't... See where I'm moving forward. But it's keeping it there. It's keeping it in my mind to be worked on. Y'all are willing I can become as perfect as you all are. Y'all is really raising the righteous people. Repent of sin and then start practicing as best you can from the teachings from the house of Yahweh. First Yachanon 3.4 is, uh, talks about how sin is the breaking of Yahweh's laws, and his laws are taught at his house. The only place they're actually taught is at his house. We can't trust anything from any other source. Look down to verse 9. Uh, the news here. Trump staffs, Trump staffs up the Mideast team for a peace plan rollout. You see the attention now that the United States is uh, uh, putting toward these nations around the great river Euphrates. I know we know it. We see it all the time. He says this is the plan that they've got going on with Gaza. And you might put that in your memory there. And the plan that they've got going with Gaza with these people. And they, they, uh, this has been going on since the days of Abraham but we're going to solve it in this time period. He says, that's true, we are. Not through man's schemes, but after man proves something. I hope you have your books. I wish you could read this with me. But after man proves that he can't do anything but blow himself up. Yahweh is allowing it. We touched on that in services uh, yesterday. He's allowing man to self-destruct. He's going to see the works of his hand. He's going to see what he has caused by turning away from Yahweh's beautiful, righteous instructions. Hmm. Let's look at verse... Let me stop all. Let's go over to verse 19, page 256. Let's pick up from there. Pastor says here, I want you to turn over to Zechariah. Zechariah 9. 
Of course, prior to this, he shows a lot of information on, on Damascus. But he says, with all of this news in mind, he says, I can tell you, you really need to take your spare time and start re-listening to these sermons. And uh, this is not going to be easy to absorb, but you can if you will work on it. Yahweh's given us a, a beautiful tool with the way he's allowed Facebook to record and play our sermons. Speaking of so, someone asked me a question. Uh, I guess he, he told me he heard some mumbling about numbers from Facebook sermons. <laughs> Man, there should be no doubt of the witness Israel. You can go right after services if you like, and you can view the number of views right on the screen. But don't just stop there. Go back the next day and look at the number of views on the screen. The exact same sermon. Go right on up to the next Sabbath and you'll see the very numbers in which he puts out in front of us. There's nothing to hold any doubt about. And I only mention those things so that if one of these little specks get in your beautiful ears, you, know, you can easily push it to the side, Yahweh willing. This re-listening to these sermons, and by the way, for those of you that do not have internet access where you can live stream, then you can immediately after services, go after services time is over, you can go on Facebook and watch services. I mean, sometimes it renders in a very short time. So two minutes after service is over, you may be able to, you possibly can replay the whole sermon. You can go to a library or whatever, watch the sermons, re-listen to them. Because the pastor says all these are not. He says this is not going to be easy to absorb, but you can if you'll work at it. And Yahweh's given us the tools to do that. It takes some work, and it'll show Yahweh how much you actually want to learn. There's that effort that we're going to be sentenced from. It'll show Yahweh how much we actually want to learn and how eager we are to learn. And what he had inspired to be written in the scriptures. Pastor says it's a command. It's a law. It's a law. Search out the book of Yahweh. Search out the book of Yahweh. You do that by just flipping the pages? No. You're absolutely correct. You do that by going to his house. As he prophesied where his house would be. Then now you work with the priests. All of this is part of searching out the book of Yahweh. Because none of us can learn without a teacher. And that teacher has to be united in perfect unity with Pastor Israel Abel Hawkins. Then you will work with the priest because you can't understand it on your own. I could read that ten times over and over again. There is no way. Now, this is direct words from pastor men. I can tell you that until my tongue turns blue from preaching. So let's never get to the point where we're high and mighty and we know more than the house of Yahweh on any topic, at any time. Pastor says in verse 20, unless you have this explanation that I'm about to give you, you'll never understand what I'm talking about. Nor the complications of how this came about and how it was written for you. Where no one else could understand, where the wicked could never understand. The wicked will never be able to understand. There's no way a fall away or some man that's not in unity with Yahweh's house can explain anything to any of you. No matter how many books he walks into the sanctuary with, and no matter, no matter how many years he studied Hebrew, <clears throat> the wicked will never be able to understand, and that's what Daniel told you. The pastor says it clear here. You're a fool if you don't believe. So you can see the firmness in his words there. I just tried to echo it teaching us how to study, how to follow him. 
Continuing in verse 21. Here in Zechariah 9, 1, pastor says, I brought some on this recently, and I've written a bunch on it before. I still haven't explained it fully. <laughs> what topic do we know of, men? We don't know the level in which pastors even explain to us yet about the Sabbath, about how to pray. We have to wait on Yahweh. He says, I still haven't explained it fully, and it's going to take a while. He mentions how the interlinear gives you the Hebrew for this verse, talking about the oracle, the oracle, the word of Yahweh. And that's what the prophecies are. They're the words of Yahweh written by his prophets under inspiration to be brought down to you in these last days. They were given to them, but they couldn't understand them. Daniel even told you that he couldn't understand them. And even being a priest in Yahweh's house, judgments come down. And it is my, not my job to understand it per se, but to deliver. Many times, many times we have to wait on Yahweh, get back to the priest, ask, 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 ask. To be in conformity with, and that's now, if we really lean our hearts and minds toward the house of Yahweh to understand what's being taught, then we start to get the understanding behind it. Pastor says, continuing in verse 22, you should see these things that Yahweh is telling you are complicated so none of the wicked will ever understand. But you will understand. How is that? How are we going to understand so great? Well, the next sentence shows a part of it. When you grasp your subconscious mind and you see this all together, after it's been explained and after you've really studied to see what Yahweh wants you to see, then you will understand. So it's not a one-minute study. I'll flip the dictionary open. He says, you'll understand the way Yahweh will deal with you in the future when he sends you out on assignments to planets. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get to a planet? You don't know yet because you don't have that instruction. Beautiful. So now you're ready. So when Yahweh gives gives you those instructions, you know then to just immediately start following. Number one, number two, number three. That way Yahweh knows, you know, how how Yahweh will deal with you in the future when he sends you out on assignments to planets to actually straighten out a planet or the governments of that planet. Wow, that's our job. You will be sent, and that's why you're training. That's why unity is pushed so hard in the house of Yahweh. Or else we would create disunity on another planet. We had everyone on that planet praising Kohan Ilya instead of praising Yahweh. All glory, honor, and praise goes to Yahweh. We're merely the messengers that Yahweh sends out. And we have to show him that he can trust us, that we'll really be loyal with his sending out of us. Apostles. (laughs) Apostles. <laughs> hmm. Verse 23, the word of Yahweh against the land of Hadrach. I want to go there. Yes. Pastor says, I would have a map here showing where it was, and he does. He shows Damascus. Hmm. And he shows, let's see, verse 24. Then the translators who were wicked, they didn't understand it. He said, and they put their own sayings in. But they gave you a translation. They gave us a translation, which 
uh, we have been working on for years to straighten out the mistranslations and adding the name back. That is why another reason why none of us need to go, even open our books of Yahweh, find something, and then come back and say, oh no, the house of Yahweh is wrong because of this. Hold tight. What mistranslations has pastor revealed to you? You can be trying to use a mistranslation in your high and mighty moment. There's no way we can understand the scriptures without being able to know the name Yahweh, where it's rightly shown. And that's one reason why uh, we must stand firmly behind the book of Yahweh. And not any translation or rendition out in the world. Because it's only the book of Yahweh from the house of Yahweh that has uh, placed Yahweh's name rightly where it belongs. Well, Pastor says that there. There's no way to understand. You can understand the scriptures without being able to know the name Yahweh where it's rightly shown. Otherwise, you'd be thinking God showed you and you don't know what God it was, but some God showed you it. Probably on Halloween, he says, when you got some poison candy or some some tainted candy. It's that easy to go off track to take ourselves and a whole lot of others along with us in the foolishness. Hmm. Verse 25, Pastor says, let's go back to the prophecy in English. But remember what I read to you from the Hebrew And it shows Yahweh's name. And he was speaking here. He says, it shows these oracles. It shows Damascus. It shows where the trouble is taking place right now in and around the great river Euphrates. We see it on the news daily, let alone on the Sabbath days. Would we be a fool not to believe what's about to take place? Uh, he says, uh, he says, Damascus. He says, you read it, but you didn't understand. And I'm going to spend a lot of time making you understand this. And he does in this sermon. So, don't know how far that, what the next speaker will get into with you out of it, but I surely encourage you to go back, re listen, re watch, uh, pull out your books of Israel. And, you know, allow Yahweh to write in your heart and mind prophecies about Damascus. You'll see these details, which Pastor goes into in this sermon. Uh, it, it, it's mind-blowing. So I don't want to... Oh, sorry. Praise Yahweh. I don't... Uh, I don't want you to dare shortcut yourself. Let's see. These prophecies are called oracles in verse 26. The only true oracles or revelation come from the Holy of Holies, which was given to you. And that's the reason I wanted, he says, the great uh, David Yahudi to bring out this information that he brought. And then he starts going into 1 Kings 6. And I'm I'm right at the time limit. But Yahweh willing, that'll be a prelude for the next priest. Because we have quite a great honor. If you all please stand. I'd like to turn over the class to our next speaker, and great teacher in Yahweh's great house, the great Kohan, Shamil Hawkins. Shalom. You may be seated. So verse 26, it says, these prophecies are called oracles. So oracles, prophecies, kind of synonymous. And Pastor goes on to 1 Kings 6.16, and he said, "Then then he constructed the 20 cubit or 30 foot square room of cedar boards, 30 feet. That's a pretty big room. From floor to ceiling, at the back of the house, at the back of the house of Yahweh, to form 
within the house an inner sanctuary, the most holy place. He says, that's what we enter in today. Do we really think about that? Do we really think about where we are in regards and relation to the pattern of the temple or the house of Yahweh of old? Pastor continues here. He says, that's what I'm taking you into to show you what Yahweh is showing us. Praise Yahweh. That was the most holy place. The holy place is in verse 17, which is the outer sanctuary in front of the most holy place, about 40 cubits or 60 feet long. He prepared the most holy place inside the house to set the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh there. The most holy place was 20 cubits long. He gives you the size again. Solomon Solomon overlaid the inside of the house with pure gold and stretched chains of gold. The entire inside of the house was overlaid with gold. And this is where pastor's going. And I kind of rushed through it. In the most holy place, he made two cherubim or two witnesses. Get that word witnesses in your mind. At this, as this was brought out this morning in the Yamatria or Yamatria and actually tagged to our number 1074, the two witnesses are tagged to it. In fact, all the works that began at creation are actually tagged to this ending number of hours. In the most holy place, he made two cherubim of olive wood. Each of them were 15 feet high. If you look at Exodus 25, this is what the Kohan brought out this morning with Yamatria. Make a lamp stand of pure gold and hammer it out. Base and shaft, it's flower-like cups, buds and blossoms shall be of one piece with it. Pastor's showing you all of these scriptures to show you. You know, the next in in verse 36 is, quote in verse 32, it says six branches. Branches. What comes to your mind when you hear the branches? You know, this last work is spoken of all over. You know, the, the vine and the branches... Even what the the seven lamp lamp stand looked like, each of the branches, it all points to this last day's work and and our overseer. You know, Pastor talks about when he was growing up. There's a lot of things he went through to be trained, to be able to lead us, to guide us, whether it was the kerosene lantern, the number three tub that he washed in, you know, whatever those stories were, there's probably some of those same kinds of stories in all of our lives. How Yahweh, we should have been dead. I don't know, train run over us or something. But Yahweh didn't allow that to take place because he needed us in here now. He wanted us here now you know there's we're we've all how do I want to word this I know he was trained all his life to be able to do this job I want to say that we've been trained as well to be in the place the position that we're in now at least we've been protected to be able to be here in this time, in the positions that we're in. And praise Yahweh, 
I guess maybe I, I could tend to be a sissy. I don't think I'd have wanted to live during the grapes of wrath time, you know, when, when all it was was sand and it was blowing day in and day out and getting in your mouth and your eyes and your ears all night, all day. You could never get away from it. All of this, pastor's going through, showing us about the seven-lamp lampstand, the golden seven-lamp lampstand, and what it represents. And in the midst of it is one like the Son of Man. That plan was all known about because... Didn't somebody build the lampstand, the seven lamp lampstand, a couple thousand years before Yeshua? Yeah. The plan was from the beginning. That plan was known. Maybe not the details that we're learning, but the plan was known. The pastor goes to Revelation 10, 7. He said, we're working on a song. You need to get this song and start practicing it. If, if you twist the arms of the doctor of music just a little, look at verse 7. Remember what Yachanan saw, the lampstand. He turned and he saw Yeshua, the lampstand, and heard a voice, a voice. But in the days of the voice of the seventh Moloch, so the seventh lamp, you see that? It's the seventh Moloch of uh, our messenger. We saw one of them that was 15 feet tall, one of them standing in the Holy of Holies along with the lampstand. When he will begin to sound, the great secret of Yahweh would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets as is shown in the prophecies. Now look back to Revelation 1.3. He said, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time. The time. Don't miss that word. The time is at hand. What time is he talking about? The time. He said, in the midst of the seventh lamp lampstand, one like the Son of Man. So here, you've got the witness and the Son of Man in this time period, that time period. Can you see that? And in the midst of the seventh lampstand, seventh lamp lampstand, one like the Son of Man, one like the Son of Man. You know, we belong to the one that we are obedient to. You know, Romans 6, 16, and 1 Yachanan 4, 7, and 8. Those who practice sin belong to Satan. Those who practice sin belongs to Satan. <clears throat> and we're warned to not forsake the gathering or the assembling of, of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Don't forsake that. If you do, you go to 666. You no longer have Yahweh's tag number, 1074, but you have hers, 666. You know, Yeshua's name, whenever you see Yeshua written down in the scriptures, it says Yahweh will save his people from their sin. How does Yahweh do that? Through the, law. Through the teaching of the law, right? Yes. And our practicing. 
His people are those who repent of sin and turn to righteousness through Yahweh's priests. He says, go to the place. Go to the place and don't leave it. Just go to the place and there train and be tested until the end. He who endures until the end will be saved. You know, there's back to those two olive trees. The branches. All of these things are synonymous. They're all talking about those witnesses. And it's the branch that builds the house. And praise Yahweh, we get to be a a hammer, we get to be a nail, we get to be a, a wooden peg, maybe a heater, a camera, a piece of cotton or whatever that stuff is up there. As long as we're a part of the building of that house by the last witness, isn't, isn't that enough? Do we really need to be more? Now, Yahweh can make us as much more as he wants to, but do we really need to be more, make ourselves more? I don't think so. I don't think it would last even if we could. I can't make one of my gray hairs turn back to brown. And I also can't make one of those brown ones turn to gray. Go figure. So I'm not going to make myself anything that I'm not. I need to work on what I am and allow Yahweh to help me be who he wants me to be and put me down. Praise Yahweh. Put us, and I don't mean put us down like, you know, The world thinks of it. I just mean put us ourselves down. Don't lift ourselves up above the other. You know, in here, in in this sermon, pastor's talking about Damascus. It ends in Damascus, right? And all this was was his opening to get us to that point, to get us to think about it. Prophecy of doom, the burden. Does anybody remember what the burden was, what the burden is? Those that don't teach the people the law. You are the burden. Those that don't teach the law. He says, woe to the pastors, the shepherds, who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says Yahweh. Therefore, this is what Yahweh, the father of Israel, says against the pastors who feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away. If you think about it, Damascus was associated with Abraham. Damascus is a very old city. I think I've even heard recently that it's the longest inhabited city in all history of man. The prophecy concerning Damascus in Isaiah 17 says you're going to, become a ruinous heap. That was written 2,000 years before Yeshua. 2,000 years of thereabout. You know, pastor says, behold, I'm going to visit, attend to you for the evil. Always remember to associate the word evil with Genesis 3, 5, evil like the gods. But I will gather the remnant. Remember the word remnant? Because it's also included in this prophecy of Damascus. You're right along with it. You're that time period. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them. Did you know that this is the first time that's ever been done? We ever think about that? It's a first. Bringing that remnant, that flock out of the nations. There's a lot of firsts for the seventh era of the house of Yahweh.
says, but I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. And that includes Damascus. The people there are suffering. They've suffered ever since the days of Abraham. But the big prophecy is now. They have survived and grown, and Damascus has become a super city. But it's going to be a heap of ruins, a ruinous heap. Out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds. That's you at the house of Yahweh. And they will be fruitful and increase. Those prophets taught those in Jerusalem and in Damascus and everywhere else profaneness. They didn't teach them the truth. They made the law a burden. And Yahweh says, I haven't sent these prophets, yet they ran. I haven't sent them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words the laws and the prophets, then they would have turned them from their evil way. Genesis 3, 5, the evil way. And from the evil, evil of the gods. How long will, it, will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Yes, they are prophets of the deceit of their own minds. They make stuff up. It's all in their imagination. So the prophecy of doom, the burden of the word of Yahweh. In Remy 23, 32, it says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says Yahweh. They tell them and cause my people to err, err go astray by their lies and recklessness. pastor explains that the land of Hadrach, Damascus, that's right outside of Galilee. Right, side, right outside of Galilee. And Tyre isn't that far away from there either. So I guess the city of Abel and Galilee, and, and all of these areas, they're kind of all in the same neighborhood. And that little part along the great river Euphrates or just around, in and around the great river Euphrates. Pastor says, Tyre was an inland city to begin with. It was a huge city. And then they moved. There was a big island which you can which you see China trying to imitate. I don't know that I ever thought about it that way. China's building an island. Tyre, they built an island. It took them quite some time to be able to be conquered because they did have that city built on an island. Alexander the Great took the city under siege. The pastor says it took something like 13 years. It's, it's amazing. Let me back up here. Tyre, the city that Yahweh wanted to make an example out of. That is, he had to set up to be an example of his protection. Not so much for the people back then, even though they saw it and feared. They started fearing Yahweh, not enough to turn to him in righteousness, but they saw that nothing interfered with his plan. This is what he's proving to you right now when he says his eyes are on you. He's encamped about his house to protect you because it's going to get really shaky. 
here very, very soon. It's getting so right now. It's getting to where a person can go outside, go swimming on the beach, and get sick. I don't know what fool would want to do that right now, but I've got articles here in the stack somewhere that show how dangerous the beaches are and how dangerous the cities are and how dangerous the grocery stores are and how dangerous the fruit is. But how protected we are here in the house of Yahweh. Yahweh doesn't want us to have sickness or disease or death. Our bodies need to be strong in these last days. And we should pray for that, that Yahweh will keep us strong and keep our minds strong so we can understand. Keep our minds strong so we don't, we don't turn out to be like the people we see in the news every day that don't know what a woman's for, don't know what a man's for, and don't know if they're a man or a woman or a boy or a girl. They don't even know what bathroom to go to. Yahweh doesn't want that for us. Can't we see that that's confusion? I think I saw something the other day in the news that said there's like 136 or 137 different genders. What? What? And there's some cities right now you can get fined up to $250,000 for saying illegal alien and saying you're going to call ICE or the police or whatever because that's what this person is. The thought police, the word police, they're all out there. But can you see sort of kind of a parallel, a pattern? Remember, there's words that we don't say anymore. I can remember children were the greatest help to, for, to not say words. You know, the G word, and you know, all of, that's just the one I'll use as my example. I don't want to set it, say it because then it'll liable to get in our minds and it'll take us a while to get rid of it. But I remember we played a game. Every time I'd say that word, he'd beep or bop. And it... It was ridiculous. But it didn't take real long because it was so aggravating that he'd do that. It didn't take me long to give that word up. So I guess we had word police back then too. But it was by choice. And it was for righteousness sake and not stupidity. Can you see how those people consider themselves wise and they're really fools. You men know more. I would pit any one of you against every one of those that live in Washington, D.C., and that's where they were. You're all smarter than they are. You're all wiser. They don't have any wisdom. They don't even have knowledge. They don't have any understanding of anything. Can you see how, what, what is there, 535 men and women that run, you know, that are in, in that political branch of the government, not the executive, and we allow 535 or whatever that number is, people tell us all that they tell us and force us to do the things that the laws of this land do and they don't listen to those who vote for them? Who was elected into their office here? Or did Yahweh choose us? Because why would, why would we want to be elected into the office of deacon or priest or overseer or who cares if you want me to be in that office? I just care that he wants me in that office. Or you, or you, or any of us. Shouldn't that be all we're concerned with? 
So when pastors teaching us that Damascus, watch Damascus, it's the end or the beginning of the end or however he worded it, and I'm not going to go back. You got the book. That'll be your assignment. Exactly what did he say there? But Damascus is at the end. The prophecies rest on the prophecy of Damascus. Has Yahweh really let us down? Has he ever said something would come to pass or take place that hasn't? And most time he sneaks it on us. He sneaks it in on us. The linen outfits. But you know what? You go back and you look in this book. He talked about that a year ago. If you look for it, it's in here. And I would venture if we went back to the book of Israel, the first book of Israel, the second book, you know, there's things that we went through six months to a year, maybe two years, maybe three. But he talked about them. He taught us about it. You noticed how great you felt in those suits? It was comfortable, the temperature. I mean, I, you know, I, I wanted to go as linen-centric as I could, so I didn't wear a cotton undershirt. And I thought, oh, man, that's all to be a problem. But you know, it wasn't. That, sh- that robe was pretty comfortable. And I thought, man, the first time I got mine, I could hold my hands all the way out here. There was so much material in there, I couldn't even skinch it up enough to be able to get the, the ribbon to tie. But it all got fixed. It's, it all got fixed. Every one of us will have our uniforms, our linen uniforms. We'll have them. And it's a joyful thing. I didn't see anybody say, you know, what? That looks foolish. I'm not wearing that. You know, I didn't hear one person have a negative comment about it. I was a little concerned how I was going to tie myself up in that suit there for a while till they went ahead and fixed it. Yahweh is truly blessing us. He granted us the legal right to wear those suits. It's amazing what time we're in. Don't lose sight of it. And like Pastor says, Yahweh bless you, and he'll turn the services over to the priest for closing prayer.